In this tutorial, you're gonna deploy a Flask application to the cloud using AWS Elastic Beanstalk service. Beanstalk is a managed service that enables deploying web applications fast and easily to the AWS cloud. With Beanstalk, you don't need to interact with other services, since Beanstalk automates the deployment process for you. In this video, you're gonna learn User and Permission Management with IAM AWS and eBCLI Configuration and Usage Deploying a Python Flask web application with MySQL to Elastic Beanstalk Accessing MySQL database on RDS To implement the project in this video, please ensure the following prerequisites. Check out the video description if you need assistance with any of these prerequisites. First step. Configuration. In this step, you configure underlying resources and tools used throughout this video. First off, use the IAM service for creating a new user, credentials, and set permissions for using with the Beanstalk CLI. This is a well-known best practice when using external and third-party tools. Go to the IAM console and create a new user. In this video, we attach an admin policy to this user. This policy is too much permissive for what we're gonna do here. Please consider creating a more restrictive policy when working on a real scenario. Once the user is created, set its credentials. Save these credentials for configuring the CLI. Next, configure AWS CLI to use the recently created credentials. Open your terminal, type and run the following command. Use the previously saved credential to configure the CLI. You can test your CLI by trying to access the S3 service. Then, clone the GitHub repository with the Flask app we gonna deploy. Please check out the link for the GitHub repository in the video description. Second step. Deploy and test. In this step, you use Beanstalk CLI for provisioning the cloud resources you need, and for deploying your Flask application. Beanstalk delegates resource provisioning to AWS CloudFormation, which in turn, takes care of all heavy lifting for you. Beanstalk also uses Amazon S3 to store your application files. Back to your terminal, go into the application folder, type and run the following command. This creates a Beanstalk application and environment. An application is a logical space that groups related environments. In this video, you create an application in the US East 1 region, and set the environment to use Python version 3.8.
Next set the resources you need for your deployment. For the project in this video, you need to create a new environment that consists of a single EC2 instance and a MySQL database engine. To do so, type and run the following command. It is important to highlight that Beanstalk doesn't create databases by default. So, regardless if you are using the CLI or the web console, you need to provide additional parameters to create a database if you need one. Accept the default values. But set a password for your database. You can follow the provisioning process on your terminal. This may take about 10 minutes to complete. Once your application is deployed, application users can access it using the endpoint provided by Beanstalk. You can access your Flask application by typing the following command. You can now test your application. Third step. Explore the database. In this tutorial, Beanstalk creates a new database as part of the resource provisioning. By default, the security group that protects the database only allows connections from the security group that protects the EC2 instance. So, to explore the database, you must create an inbound rule that allows your access. For security reasons, this inbound rule should open a door for your IP only. Back to your terminal, list your existing security groups with the following command. Make a note of your security group ID. Use any online service to figure out your current IP and then create a new inbound rule with the following command. This rule opens the port 3306, which is the MySQL default port, in the security group identified by this ID. For connections using the TCP protocol, from this source, Next, type the following command to identifying your database endpoint. Then, you need a MySQL client to access your database. In this video, we use the database client extension for Visual Studio Code. Please check out the link in this video description if you want to use the same tool. Enter your connection name. Database endpoint Username Password And click connect When you explore the to-do table, you're gonna find the tasks you created earlier using the Flask application. Last step. Clean up. Because Elastic Beanstalk is a managed service, you can delete all resources created in this video using the following command. Confirm. and wait until resources are terminated.
Note that your database and all its data is deleted as part of the termination process. You can retain the database, but this requires extra configuration. Please check out the AWS Elastic Beanstalk documentation to see how to do that.